everyone, welcome, I'm Robert, and this is a solo review of Heroes of Might and Magic, the board game. And I did not back the crowdfunding campaign for this game, although it looked enticing at the time. Uh, I've been burned by video game to board game adaptations in the past, uh, so I decided to wait and see. Uh, and now that people have been getting their copies, uh, I saw that it's getting pretty good reception. Uh, so I went ahead and got a second-hand copy of the Grail Pledge. Uh, but um, without the uh, Inferno expansion and not the big box version, okay? Uh, so I've experienced the uh, core set contents from the solo perspective. I have not added any expansion content. Uh, I want to emphasize also uh, for folks that get the retail copy uh, of the core set later if this is a worthwhile purchase or, or system to get into, okay? Uh, so I've only experienced the, uh, the core set, but I'll also discuss later what the expansions add, all right? Uh, so I also want to uh, give you, uh, um, you know, my where I'm coming from uh, with this game. So uh, I did not play uh, Heroes of Might and Magic growing up. I did uh, see my dad playing it on PC, so I watched him play it, so I, I know of it. And then a couple of years ago, I, I got a copy from uh, G, uh, from uh, Good Old Games, all right, uh, and uh, and played it myself. Uh, and also, I'm a big Mage Knight fan. Uh, so I understand that Mage Knight has some inspiration from Heroes of Might and Magic. I know it's a very beloved uh, video game, right? It's one of the best of all time. And when I played it a couple of years ago, I can see why. I can see how you could lose hundreds of hours into that game. Uh, so uh, I think it's a pretty sp uh, special game. Uh, I don't, you know, I don't need to have grown up uh, playing it to tell you that. All right. Uh, so. Now, um, uh, one of the first things uh, I'm going to get into is a gameplay overview so that, uh, you know, you get an idea of the gameplay loop. And also, I do have a full playthrough of uh, the first campaign scenario for the, um, the core set uh, campaign for the uh, castle faction, right? So I'll link you that uh, in the description there uh, if you want to see a full playthrough of this, okay? Uh, but I'll give you a gameplay, a gameplay overview in a second. Uh, but I also want to suggest that if you do want to get into this uh, game for the first time, um, beyond what's included in the box, there's a couple of things that you should download, all right? Um, so uh, if you got the the uh, the uh, crowdfunding pledge, you're, you'll get a astrologer's answer uh, booklet that gives you some FAQ answers, right? That's very important. There's a lot of answer. There's a lot of questions that are answered there. Uh, so, you, you know, you have the rule book from the uh, from the core set, but you should also read the astrologer's answer. I don't know if that'll come in the retail version later, uh, so I'll leave a link uh, in the description to the Arc Archon website for uh, Heroes of Might and Magic 3 downloads, so you can find the astrologer's answers there. You have to make sure you read that, okay? Uh, I also suggest that you visit the Archon Discord channel for uh, rules questions for Heroes of Mad and Magic. The devs and other players are very active in answering questions there and it has been very helpful, okay? And I also suggest that you download the Rulebook Rewrite Project, uh, which, I'll leave, um, which I'll leave in the, uh, in the comment section, uh, sorry, in the description, because um, the rulebook is a bit rough uh, with, in, with the game, uh, which I'll discuss in detail later, but uh, you know, uh, the, the devs have been really great at answering questions and uh, there's a, a rewrite project from a fan that has been very helpful, right? Uh, in, you know, getting uh, in, it's been uh, very, very helpful for internalizing the rules. So I'll leave links to all of that, right? Uh, and with that, let's go ahead and give you a gameplay overview of uh, the Heroes of Might and Magic board game. All right, so what happens in Heroes of Might and Magic 3, the board game? Uh, so you're going to be controlling a hero and also a town board, and you're going to use your hero to move around the map, explore, and gain artifacts, gain resources, conquer settlements, and uh, you're going to be uh, increasing your, uh, you know, your resource income, discovering loot and equipment, and uh, empowering and reinforcing your army. Uh, so uh, as you encounter neutral, um, neutral armies, all right, uh, throughout the map, you're going to level up your hero, okay, and gain resources, all right? Now, when you, uh, when you encounter either neutral mobs or uh, fight other heroes, uh, the combat aspect takes place in this battlefield board where you move your units around. There's ranged units, flying units, ground units, uh, and you're going to be rolling dice uh, to determine... Uh, so you can boost your... 
uh, your uh, units using your cards in hand, all right? So there's might and magic cards, all right? So there's a deck building aspect uh, where you use your hand. Uh, there, there's some effects that take place in the world map or there's some cards that give you resources, but for the most part, the cards that, uh, you know, that make up your deck are geared towards combat, all right? So you're gonna be using your cards to increase your uh, unit stats, you're gonna be casting spells, all right, to deal damage and do other effects. Uh, your, your hero is gonna have specialties, okay, uh, that are unique to that hero uh, that you can employ in combat. And when you, uh, when you attack in combat, you roll dice to determine uh, if, you know, you deal that amount of damage or you subtract one or add one. So this die, um, you know, doesn't, it adds that element of uh, uncertainty, all right, when, when, every time that you attack. Uh, so the tactical combat, uh, again, takes place here. There's also an expansion that, uh, the battlefield expansion that makes the, uh, battlefield a hex grid and it makes it more akin to the original game all right i have not experienced that yet uh, but the main uh, you know the main core uh, gameplay in the battlefield takes place here in this grid all right and you're going to be managing your town board uh, to build uh, to add more buildings uh, here all right so you pay for a building and uh, you unlock things like uh, you know stronger units to recruit uh, and other interesting bonuses that are unique to each faction all right and uh, typically, the the goals are uh, scenario based, right? So there's going to be tons of scenarios. There's the majority of scenarios are multiplayer or cooperative based, uh, but then you also have the solo scenarios, which I'll discuss later, right? But yeah, everything is determined. The parameters, victory conditions, uh, the round limit, all of that is determined by scenarios. Uh, but yeah, uh, there's uh, lots of scopes here. The town, because the town uh, management uh, and the economy with the resources, right? Uh, there's three different types of resources. Uh, there's valuables, uh, there's uh, building materials, and then there's uh, gold, right? Uh, but yeah, you have those resources. So there's that economy, the town uh, construction aspect, the tactical uh, uh, gameplay on the battlefield here, and then the exploration and RPG elements with your hero leveling up and all that, and of course the uh, deck building, okay, uh, with your mind and magic deck. Uh, so that is a gist of the uh, gameplay and everything that happens in uh, uh, this game, and like I said, I do have a full playthrough, so feel free to check that out if you want to see uh, in detail how this plays uh, solo, okay. Okay, so first, uh, I'm gonna get the negatives out of the way because I do feel uh, pretty uh, positive about the game, right? So I wanna get the negative stuff out of the way first. Uh, the first thing I have to address is the rulebook, all right? As, uh, you know, as my earlier comments implied about all the stuff that you should download, uh, the rulebook is in pretty rough shape, all right? Um, and, you know, it's a pretty common complaint uh, and, um, I read it, all right, and you read it, when you read it the first time, it, you know, you have the impression that you have everything uh, you need, all right, uh, although the information is kind of scattered, uh, uh, it's, it's, the information is presented in a very strange order, all right, uh, but, you know, you read through the rulebook and then you start playing, and definitely some stuff is going to start, uh, you know, some interactions and some situations are going to arise where uh, you're going to have some questions, especially, especially during combat and, you know, with some card interactions, uh, you're gonna have you're gonna have some questions uh, with how certain cards interact, all right? Um, uh, but uh, what I did was, uh, like I said, visit the uh, uh, Discord and search for answers there. Uh, the astrologer's answer uh, document has lots of answers, all right? Uh, there, so make sure that you read that thoroughly. Uh, and also, uh, the rulebook rewrite project also helps. It basically rearranges the information and adds some uh, FAQ and officially answered questions from Board Game Geek and the Discord and integrate some answers in it. It's a work in progress, all right? Uh, but uh, I actually suggest that you read the uh, Jotaro, uh, well, I don't remember his name, but he has a Jotaro avatar, but uh, go ahead and read the blog post where he uh, explains why he started the project. I found it pretty, I found it a pretty good read, all right, I'll leave a link to that. Uh, I found it pretty funny, but yeah, the rulebook's a bit in rough shape, but it it wasn't, bad enough that I wasn't able to experience the whole campaign or anything like that. Uh, but yeah, you're definitely gonna be investing some time, uh, you know, finding answers and, and clearing up uh, things, okay? Uh, but uh, to summarize a bit of what Jotaro says in the, uh, in, the um, in his post, uh, the, the rulebook is just org organized in a very, very strange way. Uh, there, there's lack of, a chronic lack of uh, 
clarity and elaborating on certain concepts, right? Uh, so yeah, it leaves out some details that are important, but uh, I've been able to answer, uh, to find answers to questions uh, through Discord and the um, and the astrologer's answer uh, and the rulebook rewrite project. So you're definitely going to have to invest some time internalizing the system, okay? Um, now, uh, another uh, negative I have is uh, I wish that the the faction unit miniatures were optional. So uh, uh, miniatures come in a couple categories. You have your hero pawns, all right, which is the one that you move around the map. I'm perfectly happy with those, all right. Uh, with the core set, that's, those are the only minis that you get, and I'm perfectly happy with that. Now, uh, when you get the stretch goal content, and like I said, I did not experience any of the expansion uh, aspect, but, uh, but I will uh, explain what that brings, all right, if you do decide to integrate the expansions. But uh, the uh, the minis that you get from just buying the core set is your hero pawns. When you buy faction expansions, they not only include that, but they also include miniatures for your units, your army units, to use instead of the instead of using your army miniatures. Uh, sorry, instead of using your army cards on the board, you use the miniatures, and then you just put the army cards nearby to keep the, their stats in check and put the damage tokens on them and all of that. Now, the problem I have with this is uh, you're going to have a hard time convincing me that it's not just much more practical to keep the, uh, the unit cards on the battlefield to just have the information right there. It just occupies so much less space, and not only on the table, but also on your shelf, right? So, you know, storage, uh, you know, shelf storage can be a bit of a commodity uh, these days, shelf space. So uh, due to the miniatures, this will, this occupies a whole lot more than it needs to. And of course, it also increases the price, right? When you buy a faction expansion, uh, you know, um, uh, eighty percent of the content in the box is just plastic from the miniatures, uh, so that makes it more expensive. And what if you just want the extra cards that they add to the game? Uh, you're forced to buy the miniatures with them. So uh, I I know that I do I do know that Archon they have a heavy focus on miniatures. I respect that. Uh, I just wish that there was a no miniature option uh, or a option of buying all the card and tile content and hero board and town board content uh, with just the hero uh, pawns. I wish that was the case. Uh, it's not a deal breaker, but uh, you know, just a heads up, okay? And the last thing, uh, as far as negative, and you know, negative, but this also almost leans on a, a, a neutral point. Uh, the game, uh, I think it really benefits a lot from expansions. Uh, there, don't get me wrong, uh, with, it, with the core set, uh, there's plenty of content, especially uh, uh, when you buy multiplayer, more on that later. If you're going to play multiplayer, uh, more on that later, there's plenty of content. Now, for solo, you do have to download the uh, Stretch Goals Mission Book, which is uh, available from their downloads page for free. Uh, so in the core box, there's a campaign included, a three-scenario campaign included for uh, the uh, Castle Faction, and each scenario lasts from two to three hours, all right, depending on how... Uh, inter how much you've internalized the rules, and they're pretty replayable, right? Uh, uh, you can replay it with a, the the alternate hero, and I've played those scenarios multiple times, and they played completely differently uh, every time. So uh, there's some parameters that are um, timed events that are going to be the same, right? And victory conditions are the same. But how I got from point A to uh, point B, uh, you know, for uh, beginning to end, it was the journey was very different every time. Uh, you know, the cards that you draw from the different decks, or what gear you find, the spells you find, it was very uh, varied. But, uh, you know, you do only get three scenarios and, you know, replayability count only goes so far. Now, you can download uh, campaigns for the Necropolis and the Dungeon Expansion, which are the other two factions included in the uh, in the core set, uh, for free from their website. They have the, this uh, uh, available in their website, uh, and this is, this is part of the Tower Expansion, the Stretch Goals Expansion. Uh, which is uh, apparently it's a trade show exclusive, all right? It's not going to be in retail, but you can download the booklet and just, uh, you know, refer to the scenarios from there. So you get three, uh, if you download this, you get three, uh, three campaigns for the three factions. And I do consider that plenty of content, and I do plan to go through those campaigns, uh, all right, for uh, the other factions. But I played the uh, campaign for... Uh, the castle faction multiple times here, uh, and it was plenty of content, but, uh, you know, you do have to download this eventually, especially if you're only going to buy this for solo, uh, you do have to download this eventually to get more content out of your core box.
All right, so now moving on to the more neutral or miscellaneous uh, points that I want to cover, okay? Uh, so uh, one of the first things I want to mention is that this game, once you know uh, what you're doing, it sets up relatively quick, right? I timed it. Uh, I timed it from the moment that you get the game off the shelf to setting up and beginning the first round. It took me 20 minutes, all right? Uh, so obviously your mileage will vary uh, with how, if you have your components uh, stored in some way, but all I had is I had all the tokens in baggies uh, and I put them in this little uh, trace, right? Uh, so that's it. Uh, oh, and I do use these, um, I do use these uh, business card holders for the decks, but uh, other than that, I didn't really add anything else uh, other than sleeving. Uh, and it took me 20 minutes to set up the, the scenario uh, for, uh, you know, the first campaign scenario for solo. So it sets up relatively quick and you get a uh, decent, uh, you know, session length and, and crunchiness ratio uh, for, uh, for uh, 20, uh, sorry, for 20 minutes, you get like two plus hours uh, session uh, of content, all right? Uh, or uh, north of that, if you, if depending on how you, internalize you are with the rules okay uh, so that's the first thing uh, second uh, i also want to mention the organize the organizing aspect okay uh, so the inserts are great everything is greatly organized uh, i love the you know the uh, all the boxes have their inserts and spaces for the cards and tokens uh, very well organized and uh, it fits sleeved uh, i all the contents of the core box fit back in the box sleeved uh, without me having to modify anything uh, although i did use a combination of um, um, Sleeve King uh, sleeves and uh, Mayday soft sleeves. I use Mayday soft sleeves for the unit cards uh, that get moved around the battlefield, and then uh, and then also the astrologer cards and the AI cards, and then everything else, which is basically uh, all cards with this back, all right, which is the majority. I used sleeve kings because these get handled and manipulated the most because they got into the deck building uh, aspect. Okay. So all cards with this bag were used sleeve kings, everything else, made they soft, and that saves a bit of room. Now, if I had sleeved everything with uh, premium sleeves, I don't know that it would have fit back in the box, uh, because these are none of these two brands that I mentioned are uh, premium sleeves, right? Uh, sleeve kings are slightly thinner, and made they soft sleeves were, well, they're penny sleeves. So uh, with that combination of sleeves, uh, everything fit back in the box beautifully, but I think that if you use premium uh, thick sleeves. I don't know that it'll fit back in the box, all right? Just a heads up. Uh, okay, so that's this, uh, and yeah, and everything is very well uh, organized, right? So the, the inserts for the minis uh, and, you know, the there's like little uh, in, indentations for you putting the, the town board and your hero board. Uh, I thought everything uh, was very well uh, planned and organized for you to uh, set up and tear down, all right? Love the way that the inserts were executed. Very well done, um, uh, but, uh, yeah, so now uh, the other thing is um, uh, the, the negative aspect of that and why I don't put it in the positive list is, is the, the miniature aspect, okay? Uh, although, you know, inserts are great, um, the miniature part, because you're, you're forced, <laughs> you know, to, you're, you don't have an option of no miniatures, uh, as great as the inserts are, this just occupies so much room, all right? Uh, it's just... This will occupy a lot of shelf uh, real estate, right? Just a heads up. That's you know, and that's it. That's really why I don't, I, I can't fully, uh, you know, list this as a positive, right? A great insert and all, but uh, gosh, uh, because of the miniatures, <laughs> this just will occupy so much space. I have seen some people, uh, I have seen some people uh, get rid of the boxes and just put a bunch of miniatures in. A, so, so I've seen people reduce it to two boxes in total, all right? Uh, I don't know that I want to do that. I just like this the sleeves, uh, sorry, not the sleeves, the, the insert so much. I, I think I'll keep the boxes as is, uh, personally, uh, but we'll see. Now, uh, next, uh, I also want to mention the, the content of the box, right? So uh, I think that if you're going to play this uh, game beyond solo and you plan, plan to play this multiplayer, this is a no-brainer when it comes to the content because... I can picture this being great multiplayer uh, if you find the right people, like if, if you have other friends that are a fan of this, uh, of this uh, IP, I can absolutely picture this being beyond epic multiplayer. I think this would be such a blast multiplayer. Um, but at the same time, if you're only going to play solo, you, you only have a fraction of the content. Now, don't get me wrong, it's still plenty of content. You're not missing the gameplay loop, uh, all right? The gameplay loop is still there. Uh, there's, the nuances of combat are a bit lost, of course, because there's a bit of a, a mind games going on with uh, combat and, and, you know, your opponent playing cards to surprise you. But 
uh, when you play hero versus hero combat. So some of that is lost for, for sure, but the gameplay loop of, you know, leveling up, the economy, exploring the map, uh, all of that's still amazing, uh, you know, and the combat's still great. The AI has some, uh, you know, relatively easy to follow instructions for how, uh, you know, it attacks you and all that. Uh, so uh, that works great, but uh, yeah, I, I would be lying to you if I didn't say that uh, the solo part is only just a fraction of the experience here. But I have still enjoyed it, and I'm glad that uh, they. it doesn't feel like a tacked-on solo mode to me. The, the campaign, to me, felt uh, pretty good, but it's still, at the end of the day, a fraction of the vast amount of content that this has. Uh, so uh, if you do plan to play this multiplayer, uh, yeah, to me this is not like a no uh, no brainer. But yeah, for solo, uh, you know, the, you're getting a, um, you're only get, uh, getting uh, accessing a, a certain part of the content, which is the solo campaigns. Uh, all right, then uh, I also have an, uh, another little suggestion. All right, uh, I mentioned some documentation that you should download uh, earlier, but I also su suggest that you uh, photocopy these things. So this is on the back of the rule book, and this is on the back of the uh, mission book. All right, uh, keep these two things handy because you'll be referencing them a lot. Uh, and I was getting annoyed at having to open the rulebook every time I needed to reference these things. Uh, so uh, go ahead uh, and it'll make it a lot easier if you photocopy the back of both the mission book and the um, and the uh, campaign book. And also from the rulebook, I also suggest that you photocopy the settlements, right? These, are, these two columns are in different pages, but the settlements and mines, uh, uh, I, I kept referencing this because I kept wanting to remember uh, that and also the when you level up your hero, things uh, happen, right? And this wasn't exactly easy to memorize, so I went ahead and photocopy what happens when you level up, what you, uh, what bonus you get when you level up. So I would photocopy those things; it'll make your experience uh, a lot easier. All right, all right. Now next, uh, I also want to mention the the um, footprint, the table footprint aspect. Okay, so uh, I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm not gonna tell you that it's a small table footprint, but I was surprised with, you know, what this game offers and how big in scope it feels. It it, fi it fits in a relatively small space, all right? Especially, well, only if, of course, you use one of these uh, business card holders, right? I think uh, it's imperative that you use this to save uh, table space, all right? Uh, I have two of these and I was able to fit uh, all the decks uh, there, okay? Uh, so uh, with those uh, business card holders, uh, I'll show you a picture there of, the, of uh, one of the setups that I tried, right? I have a couple different tables uh, in my office, but uh, one of the tables I have there, it's a, uh, a 48 by 24 uh, four inch, uh, table and I was able to fit it pretty comfortably there. All right, and I have one big suggestion. Okay, um, when uh, and especially for solo, I don't know about multiplayer. Uh, I think even in multiplayer, to be honest with you, uh, when you set up the the table, I strongly suggest that uh, you have the battlefield in front of you. All right, don't put the battlefield to the side and the map in front. You're gonna be, um, you know, like leaning over and trying to look at a distance at the unit stats and all of that. Uh, early on, I did that, and that started to aggravate me really quick because it was really annoying having to lean over to like uh, look at the units. Uh, so that started annoying me really fast. I strongly suggest that when you set up that you have the battlefield, uh, the battlefield board, um, you know, smack uh, front and center, right? And then the map can go on the side. Everything else can go on the side. Just put the battlefield in front. Uh, you can still, you know, while you explore the map, you can still put your uh, army or your uh, hand, your deck building hand. You can still use the space. It's not completely wasted or anything. But I, I would strongly suggest that uh, even in multiplayer, when you have the your opponent in front of you, uh, when you s sit across from each other, just have the uh, just set up the the game in a way on the table where you have the battlefield in front, not on the side. Okay, uh, in my opinion. All right, so I've mentioned that uh, you know this uh, this game uh, does uh, benefit a lot from expansions, uh, and I want to elaborate more as to uh, elaborate a bit more on what it is that uh, the expansions bring. Okay, uh, so expansions uh, are faction expansions. Okay, and they'll bring more uh, tiles. All right, so it'll add variety to the uh, tiles for for exploration. They'll bring more heroes. Uh, so uh, well, okay. So each faction will bring more. Uh, each faction expansion will bring their own town board, more heroes and their units. Okay, uh, there there'll also be more, um, more neutral units. Uh, but that's specifically from the tower uh, stretch goal expansion. It brings a lot more uh, neutral units. So that 
uh, that expansion is pretty crucial in my opinion, the tower expansion, because it adds a lot of variety to the neutral units that you're going to be facing when exploring the map. Uh, I am a bit... Um, I, I do find it a bit unfortunate that they made the uh, they said that the tower expansion is gonna be a, a, a trade show ex exclusive. Uh, I, you know, I wish it was a bit more readily available because I do find the that it a, a pretty crucial expansion. Not only does it bring more variety to the factions of the core campaign, but it also brings the um, the uh, the extra campaigns for the core uh, factions, but also more heroes uh, and. Um, the neutral variety uh, of uh, units, right? Uh, but now, every expansion, even the tower, also comes with more uh, spells, more more spells, more abilities, more items. So these decks, which are the primary decks uh, that, uh, you know, that uh, from which you acquire cards for your deck when deck building in the form of uh, artifacts, spells, and abilities, uh, those get uh, th those uh, decks will get fatter from you adding the expansion content. Okay, uh, there's also more astrologers uh, event cards. So these are basically during the astrologers proclaim turn. So these all add a little bit of uh, you know uh, random events basically. Uh, but this uh, this is what's included in the core box, and then uh, the uh, expansions will add more astrologers uh, events. Uh, and more tiles and the, the factions themselves, all right? Uh, now, the, the primary thing, in my opinion, from the expansions beyond the, the, the factions themselves and their heroes and their town boards is, you know, these decks getting a bit bigger for extra variety, all right? So that's what the expansions uh, bring, all right? Uh, aside from just their, their faction miniatures and uh, other uh, materials like the, the town board and the, uh, and the hero boards. Right. Um, but uh, yeah, that pretty much is it as far as the more um, um, you know neutral or miscellaneous things that I wanted to mention about the game. Uh, and now we're gonna move on to the positives. Uh, so uh, I'll go ahead and first mention that uh, I find that the artwork, the presentation, the graphic design, the sculpts, uh, the tokens, uh, everything in this game is just absolutely gorgeous, right? Uh, I can see the amount of love that has been poured into this game. I'm sure that, uh, you know, it's pretty evident that Archon has fans of the game and they have respected the, the you know, the aesthetic of the game. And they've done a great job of adapting it from the pixelated art to the more detailed uh, paintings. And uh, it's just absolutely, absolutely spectacular. I am an absolute sucker for this high fantasy art. And uh, this is just uh, some of the most gorgeous art I have ever seen. All right. So uh, visually, this is just pure eye candy for me. All right. Uh, now, uh, I also uh, appreciate, all right, this game, th the way that it has different scopes, right? So you have the battlefield board, you have your town board, there's the map. Uh, so the way that you go back and forth between those different scopes uh, in the game, uh, it's I, I did find it very uh, interesting. I like how it joggles between those uh, three things. Uh, and on that subject, uh, with the town board and all, I found the economy pretty interesting in this game, right? Uh, you know, I you you always want to have more money to do everything, okay? So uh, that's a good sign in a game. You like you want to always like do more uh, and you know get more resources and grow. Uh, so I, I like that. Uh, the deck building uh, is pretty interesting here. Uh, it's um, um so um, it initially when I first played the game, uh, I thought that it wasn't that deep, but uh, so yeah, the, the game is not the deepest even after uh, the uh, the many times I've played the campaign, uh, but it is surprisingly deep. It's still uh, not deep. It's it's still puzzly, all right. It's still a nice, satisfying gameplay loop. It's not as deep as something say Mage Knight. The combat is not as crunchy as uh, something like Mage Knight or. Uh, Gloomhaven or something like that. Don't go into this game expecting that. But the the combat. You know, again, at the beginning, I thought that the combat wasn't that deep, but there is definitely some depth to it because of the uncertainty of the combat uh, die, all right? And also, uh, especially when you fight the enemy uh, hero, uh, there's another layer of complexity for, uh, you know, the hero casting spells and adding bonuses to their creatures. When you fight uh, neutral uh, creatures uh, around the map to level up your hero, uh, the combat is a bit more straightforward. But even then, you can't just... Uh, you know, maybe eventually after like 10 uh, more playthroughs of campaigns, I'll I'll be able to do it a bit quicker, but I still have to think uh, carefully because I don't want to unnecessarily 
you know, lose, uh, reduce my troops or use up cards. Uh, the game does a really great job of making you treasure these movement points. So your hero gets three movement points per uh, turn to move around the map. And uh, when you fight uh, neutral mobs, if you don't kill them in one turn, you have to spend uh, a movement point to prolong the combat for another turn or otherwise you lose the combat. So you really have to, well, you don't lose, you retreat, but uh, you, you really uh, are trying to finish the combat in one round and not have to use up more, um, you know, more um, movement points. So it really makes you stop and think of how to use your hand uh, and move your troops around the best, uh, you know, to the best of your ability and then, you know, pray to RNGs uh, that the die won't <laughs> screw you, okay? Uh, but when you do get that plus one, it does feel amazing, right? I, I love when you get that plus one uh, when rolling for attacks. So uh, surprisingly, there is depth to it the more I played it, right? Again, it's not as deep as something as Mage Knight, but the more I played it, the more I appreciated the, the economy, the costly gameplay, uh, and the, the nuances of combat, okay? Uh, now, uh, another uh, positive thing uh, for this game is... Uh, for me, uh, is the amount of work that I've put into it, learning it, okay? Uh, it took me a couple days uh, learning, uh, reading a bunch of uh, documentation. I read the rulebook, despite what people say about the rulebook uh, being bad uh, or in poor shape, uh, I still read it. There's a lot of very good information in it. Uh, again, it's just scattered uh, and, and a bit weirdly organized, but there's really good information in it still. Uh, and, you know, I spent time reading it. I read the rulebook rewrite project. I uh, checked Discord and BGG for answers. Uh, and I've been able to push through. And, you know, that amount of work that I've put into the game, I feel rewarded. Unlike other games where I've put that much um, that much work into learning them, and I feel that I, I got nothing for them. Uh, I have enjoyed every second of playing this, okay? Uh, I've had a blast playing it. And I'm glad that I put that work uh, into it, okay? Um, now, uh, another thing that uh, I want to mention is uh, that the, apparently the, uh, the devs are, so there's more exp uh, faction expansions coming and each faction expansion is going to have their own uh, campaign, okay? Uh, but also that um, uh, there, apparently there's going to be a scenario book that they're working on. Uh, so what I'm trying to say with that is that it, it looks like the developers are pretty committed to supporting this product. It was pretty successful. Uh, you know, they raise a lot of money and there's tons of fans of this IP. And despite the spotty rule book, it looks like the for in general, people are, are pretty pleased with it. So I like it and I hope that they keep supporting it. All right. Uh, I will definitely be uh, I do want to, uh, you know, add all the cards from the expansions to my decks for a variety and then experience the other uh, faction expansions. So I'm really looking forward, even though I do have other games that I want to play and cover in the channel. In between that, I because this sets up relatively quick and it doesn't occupy that much space uh, on the table, that is, uh, I am going to definitely be playing through those campaigns. I, I have enjoyed, I found it pretty chill just uh, exploring the map uh, leveling up my hero, um, uh, leveling up my, uh, my hero, managing the economy, and all of that. Uh, so, so I've, I've had a lot of fun uh, uh, with this game uh, the entire time, okay? Uh, and I also appreciate that the game uh, is playable without miniatures. Uh, it is unfortunate, I've already uh, touched on that earlier. Uh, the miniatures um, occupy a lot of, ta uh, of shelf space, uh, but um, you know, uh, at least I don't have to use them if I don't want to. Uh, like I, I can just put the cards in the uh, in the battlefield uh, board and just you know ignore the miniatures if I want. Uh, I do love the hero miniatures to move around the map. That's perfectly fine. Okay. All right. So now we're gonna move on to some final thoughts. All right. So to conclude, um, I would uh, recommend this game, uh, but a couple uh, caveats. So. Uh, if you're only going to get the core box, make sure that you download the extra missions from the website. Uh, and, you know, eventually you definitely want to get expansions for more extra variety and more uh, factions, okay? Uh, or extra variety of the uh, card uh, type, okay? Uh, but there's plenty of content. I would estimate that, uh, you know, uh, with the core box campaign, not including the stretch goal uh, PDF that you can download, uh, you, you can play the campaign and, multi, uh, you know, each campaign mission, it's a three mission campaign with, um, you know, 
so it's a three mission campaign and each scenario lasts like two uh, about two hours uh, and then you can play it again with a different hero it'll play very differently every time there's multiple difficulty settings uh, so th for from the solo only perspective that'll keep you pretty entertained uh, but if you also are are uh, thinking that you're gonna play this multiplayer to me this is a no-brainer I can picture this being epic multiplayer all right uh, so um, uh, with that's on the content side now uh, I wouldn't get this game if you don't like having, uh, at least at the, as of the recording of this, uh, if you don't like having to check on Discord for answers or uh, Board Game Geek for answers, uh, I would uh, avoid it for now, maybe wait till later until they uh, clean up the rulebook, but the information more, more or less uh, is there, all right, uh, for most of the questions that you might have. You're, you're just going to have to make sure that you read the official astrologer's answer FAQ, and uh, occasionally check on Discord, uh, search for answers or the board game gig, all right? Uh, uh, answers, uh, rules, uh, questions uh, section, okay? Uh, and uh, another reason why you might not want to get the game is if you don't like all the minis it comes with because they occupy a lot of uh, room in your shelf, all right? That is a bit, that can be a bit of a problem if you don't have a whole lot of uh, shelf space. Personally, I do think that the core box comes with plenty uh, of content. So if you just want to get the core set to just experience the game and occasionally uh, play it, uh, I, I, do like, uh, I do like the amount of content that you get for the core set, even for solo. I, I've just enjoyed the experience uh, that, that much that I think that the core set, uh, I've, I've spent just playing the campaign uh, twice, uh, all three missions, uh, more, than, more than that actually. Uh, like uh, Some missions I've played up to three times. but. Um, uh, just 20 plus hours of content just from the core box and that's not including the uh, ne necropolis and dungeon expansions from the uh, stretch goals right um, and uh, that's uh, more or less uh, the the biggest uh, positives and uh, negatives all right if you're a fan of the uh, f franchise uh, I to me it's a, a no-brainer but uh, make sure you know that you know what you're getting into with the complexity level and the uh, spotty state of the rule book all right uh, but yeah, definitely a gorgeous art artwork, uh, gorgeous presentation, great gameplay loop. Uh, uh, you know, despite the rulebook woes, but yeah, I, I do f I do recommend the game with those uh, reservations about the rulebook and storage. Okay, uh, and you know, uh, potential uh, expansion necessity at some point. Uh, but uh, that pretty much is it, folks. And uh, don't forget to check out the playthrough I made. Uh, to uh, if you want to solidify whether this is for you or not, and you want to see how uh, this uh, what this game is like in action, go ahead and check out the playthrough uh, for the first scenario campaign for Castle Right uh, Faction. Uh, but I want to thank you so much for watching, and I hope that you found this uh, video informative and it helps you decide whether uh, the game is for you or not. Uh, and uh, if you enjoy this content, make sure to uh, like uh, and subscribe, and uh, I'll see you in the next one.